Ladies and gentlemen, panic has actually gripped Kenya Kwanza. William Ruto and his brigades are worried. Raila Amolo Odinga has actually issued tough demands to be met. And if those demands will not be met within 14 days, then Raila Odinga is going to call for mass action across the country. In this video, I want us to look at why Raila Odinga is calling for mass action. But let us begin by looking at the three demands which Raila Odinga is making. The first demand is that the cost of living must actually come down. Why do you think Raila Odinga is talking of cost of living? The truth of the matter is that currently in this country, if you are to get 200 bob, it must not even be enough for a family of two people or three people. So the impact of cost of living is unbearable to almost all Kenyans. And Raila Odinga is suggesting that William Ruto should actually bring back the subsidies. Because remember, when William Ruto took over office, they removed the subsidies. For example, when they did that, the cost of uh, fuel shot up by 20 bob, which actually, you know, the way it uh, affects the economy. And he's also proposing that they must reduce taxes. William Ruto is actually planning to increase taxes. So basically the reason why Raila Odinga is talking of uh, cost of living is that he wants to use this to engineer a revolution. And that's why Willy Mutonga talked of uh, revolution after Eric Komondi's demonstrations. The second demand he's making is that electoral deceit must actually come to an end in the country. And Raila Odinga is demanding that IEBC servers must be open. And they must do that using reputable firms to actually conduct audit of those servers. Do you think, in your own opinion, that William Ruto and IBC can accept or can allow the servers to be audited? They won't allow that because uh, of Jose Camargo. Remember, Raila Odinga already got some IBC insider who told him what happened. So for him to demand for this audit, it actually means that he knows what he's talking about. Will William Ruto accept? That one they cannot accept. The third demand he's placing on the table is that the recruitment of IABC commissioners, which is currently, I think it kicked off, that recruitment must stop because there is need for consultation. William Ruto wants IBC, which is going to favor him. Raila Odinga probably wants an IBC where he has a say also, because they are all politicians. Do you think William Ruto would allow Raila Odinga to have a say in IABC? I don't think so. Before we, got into, before we get into all these details, in case you're watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. What we do on this channel is that we analyze politics in a way you can't find any other place. So just take a second, subscribe. To the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. You just don't know how much I value you are, you are being here, watching the videos, giving them thumbs up. But for this particular one, please give it thumbs up. And if you can, drop your comment. Relu Dinga actually made these demands during his prayer rallies. And for those who followed that prayer rally event, most of the things I actually predicted in one of my earlier videos, that Raila Odinga was going to use religion or religious platforms for politics. Because William Ruto has turned the church into his political arena. So Raila Odinga was going to use religious platforms to advance his politics. And that's why the tone of the speakers were the way they were. And he also wanted, number two, to provoke Ruto to attack the church. So that tomorrow or on Saturday, Kenya Kwanzaa government will get platforms and then they'll start attacking the church leaders who offered prayers to this particular event so that Kenyans can now start asking questions about which is the right religious group. And also lastly, I said these rallies were actually meant to counter William Ruto's rally. If you missed that analysis, I'm going to put it 
in the in the description sec section of this particular video now let us get back now to the real issue why do you think Raila Odinga is calling for mass action within 14 days let me just reframe it reframe it a bit do you think these demands can be met within 14 days do you think because today is, is uh is it tuesday or wednesday today is wednesday do you think today because next wednesday that will be one week the other wednesday another week do you think within those 14 days william Ruto shall have reduced the cost of living the, the server shall have been opened and the recruitment of IBC stopped or negotiated. Do you think it can't happen? But why do you think he's giving these demands? Because these demands are unrealistic. Nobody, nobody in power can easily accept them. Why do you think he's giving these demands? Number one, I strongly believe that Relo Dinga is actually trying to build a momentum for his one million march to status. I've always opined on this platform that nobody really understands Raila Odinga's game plan in everything here. When he began these rallies, nobody understood. He has been joined by Kalonzo. Of course, you can understand Kalonzo's interest. Martha Karua is there. You can understand Martha Karua. Wamalwa is there. But the question is, will they be able to actually reclaim their victory? The only way to reclaim the victory is, number one, court. The court had already pronounced itself on the matter. The second one is forcing the government or forcing Ruto out of office. That means he can organize one million march to state house. Today, if a million people were to march to state house and the police attempt to stop them, they might be stopped. Many will die, but it will be in the history books. So I tend to think that Raila Odinga is basically trying to build the momentum. And the, the, the issue of cost of living is basically meant to bring majority of poor people on board. The issue of electoral deceit or the servers is basically to justify his uh, claim on stolen victory. And the recruitment of IBC is pro probably for prosperity. So I tend to think that Raila Odinga is actually keen on building a momentum for 20, I mean, momentum for his 1 million march to status. Number two, why is opting for mass action is that mass action is actually legal. In our constitution, anybody is allowed to pick it. Although there are some disclaimer, but picketing is legal. Why picketing? Why mass action? Because mass action has bigger impact you know like for example if i can give you example in the last four or three weeks hello Riga has been going to kamukunji uh -huh, where jacaranda they were in uh, kisi they were in kisumu very peaceful crowd there but nothing much so william ruto he goes there comes back william ruto is still in office tomorrow nothing happens they go to the rallies they talk nothing when it will be mass action it would mean running battles with the police it will mean road being blocked it will mean government operations being paralyzed so the impact of mass action is big and will be felt instantly and that's why they are now talking of mass action number three i tend to think that this could also be a strategy to force kenya kwanza to negotiate and what are they negotiating about handshake Relo Dinga is very clear he doesn't want handshake i believe so but why do you think he can be brought to the table to discuss the first thing they can discuss is the issue of 2027 election. Raila Odinga is saying something here that there will there won't be any election. They will not participate in election without electoral reforms. Today I was just watching uh, some YouTube videos. I actually shared it on my Facebook page for those who can't check, you can check it. In that in that uh, clip a group of youths 
stormed where elections were to be held in Nigeria, some Biafra area. And then they they kicked everything, everybody down. They picked the ballot boxes, the tents which were being erected there. They burnt them down because according to them, no election was going to take place in that country. I mean, in, in that part of the country. In 2017, in this country, during Rerana, elections never took place in Azim, was it Nasa that time? In Nasa stronghold. No elections happened in Nyanga. No elections happened in Coast. No elections happened in Western Kenya. What happened were not elections. These guys would just pick a few areas, like for example, in uh, Nyanza, they picked some constituencies which falls within from Rift Valley, but they fall within uh, within Kisumu County. Like if you go to Moroni, I think there's a, a ward there which falls this side, but it's predominantly Kalenji. So they identified those. So the thing is, <clears throat> this mass action is what can force these guys to negotiate because even the church themselves will be affected. They don't want them to talk. The international community, business people, and everything. Number four, I also tend to think that the idea behind this mass action is actually to provoke Ruto to respond using force. You know, William Ruto is known to be someone who is uh, vengeful. And William Ruto is known to be someone who is ruthless, can deal with you. That is what Raila Odinga is telling him. We are coming for you. So they'll call for the mass action. William Ruto will feel angry, will pro be pro provoked, will unleash the police, will do what? And that will be taking Raila Odinga, you know, taking a, a fight to a pig in the mud. Raila Odinga will enjoy that. So for me, I also tend to think that could be one of the things he wants to, to do. And number five, in my view, I tend to think that probably Raila Odinga is keen on uh, attracting international attention. The truth of the matter is that the moment Raila Odinga will, will announce mass action, the U.S. government will issue travel, travel advisory against Kenya. So they advise their citizenship not to go to Kisumu, not to go to Kibera, not to go to blah, 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 blah. blah. Once they are done with that, they'll pile pressure. The international media will pick the story. And because it's going to be a negative story, it will find its way in international media somewhere. And that's how Raila Odinga shall have achieved his objective. And lastly, I also tend to think that these demonstrations and mass actions are actually Raila Odinga's strategies, probably with the support of Uru Kenyatta strategies, to disrupt William Ruto and his government. The truth of the matter is that William Ruto made life difficult for Uhuru Kenyatta between 2017 and 2022. There is no way Uhuru Kenyatta was just going to sit there and let Ruto do his work peacefully when he could not allow him to do that. Raila Odinga would also not want to help Ruto just achieve those objectives easily. They will have to disrupt Kenya Kwanzaa. They will have to. I don't know what you think. That's my take. And let me leave you by asking you guys this question. Do you support mass action or not? Let me read your answer in the comment section. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye bye.